Hi, this is Scott Howard. Uh, you are listening to our latest edition of a High Pro Factory Side podcast, and today we will be be talking about diesel fuel filtration. This is our second podcast on diesel fuel filtration. Today, I'm joined by Jim Simonton. Jim, if you could uh, introduce yourself, that'd be great. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I'm Jim Simonton. I've, I've been uh, working with uh, diesel filtration for almost 10 years now, uh, actually coming up on my 10-year anniversary here in just a, a few weeks. Uh, and it, 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 over the 10 years, uh, things have changed dramatically. Uh, within diesel engine world. And as we all have seen over the last several months, uh, you know, if you look at diesel prices, uh, you know, a year and a half ago, they were roughing, they were roughly running about $2.30 to $2.80 a gallon. And now in many parts of the country, it's well over $6 a gallon, uh, pushing seven. And it, because of that expense, uh, it is very imperative to make sure that uh, the fuel that you are using is as clean as possible to protect the engines because uh, the to repair an engine right now with supply chain issues and uh, all the other uh, economic turmoil within our supply chain is uh, it, it's it is absolutely something that needs to be uh, taken care of is make sure you protect that engine as much as you possibly can. Yes, it's very timely for this podcast. So, Jim, what I'd like to do is start off with an objection. If you have a customer that says, hey, I don't know if I really need to filter my diesel fuel as it uh, is unloaded from the supplier because it's a reputable supplier, what are some of the uh, things you'd like to point out? So, like I have indicated in my seminars is uh, this is actually a very common objection in that uh, – there's a lot of suppliers that, and on their site, their fuel actually is pretty clean. I've done some samples at, at various sites, and I've been I've been pleasantly surprised here and there. But the one thing that I've always learned, and sometimes the hard way, is that every time diesel fuel moves, it gets recontaminated. So if you're offloading it from their site, from the uh, supplier site onto their truck, bringing it up to your site. Uh, it's going to get pretty contaminated. Uh, offloading it off the truck into your tanks is another site where it's going to get recontaminated. And quite frankly, just sitting in the tank is another area where it can get recontaminated uh, because it's the tanks, you know, oftentimes they don't have breathers on them or at least proper breathers. Uh, and it just does not take very much dust to contaminate diesel. Uh, and, you know, the new high pressure common rail engines that have been out for the last 10 years, those are very, uh, they have very tight tolerances and just any contamination at all is, is enough to ruin an engine. And it's, it's, you know, tens of thousands of dollars sometimes uh, uh, to, to replace those. Uh, so it's a very, it, it is something that you want to take uh, seriously of making sure that you're protecting that system at every step of the process just to make sure that your equipment runs smoothly and we're not you know the reality is is filtration is very cheap uh, in comparison to a uh, in, to, in comparison to replacing all the or the injectors the injectors thank you I just I, for some reason just was thinking uh, not injectors some other word but uh, but those are really expensive to replace, and you know, for a couple thousand dollars of filtration, uh, you're saving you know tens and tens of thousands of dollars down the road. So, Jim, what are the contaminants that you like to focus on that you like to point out to the customer that we do need to address? The the typical contaminants in diesel are almost always just is dirt um, and water. Uh, just the the you know the process of of Delivering the fuel, it's uh, there's the hoses are dirty. Uh, just transferring pulls in a bunch of dust that can contaminate it. And then also there's uh, water molecules from condensation uh, that form just through uh, the natural humidity in the air or the wild temperature swings, uh, depending on where you are in the country, that will also lead to a dew point. So water uh, gets in and then. Quite frankly, on these tanks, a lot of them have sort of open air breathers. Um, rain water gets into them. It's, there's all sorts of, of issues of getting water and and can, and 
sort of dust contaminant into the fuel, and, and those definitely need to be addressed. So, Jim, I have a question for you. Let's say uh, your customer agrees that we need to filter uh, as the fuel is loaded into the bulk tank, but they have a few hundred thousand gallons or, or a large amount of fuel that sits on their site and is not used all that often. It's going to sit there for a little bit. What are some of the other options we have as far as attaching to a bulk tank? So one of the other uh, pieces of equipment that we have available to uh, to for that type of situation is, is a kidney loop and kidney loops can be sized from you know something as little as a as a hundred gallons up to you know several hundred thousand gallons we you know we have the ability to scale our pumps and 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 capabilities to address that specific need because uh, the reality is is you want to you want to pass that fuel through those filters um, if you want to make sure that every drop hits that filter uh, it needs to go through at least seven times uh, so if you say so you got to, you want to be able to, and you want to do that quickly. So you got to address that pump uh, and the and the filter amount or size, uh, depending on how you're doing it, uh, to meet that challenge. Because you don't, you want to be able to do it in, in hours, not days, uh, if at all possible. And we definitely have that that capability to to scale our our kidney loops to meet whatever um, situation that our customers have. That's good information, Jim. And one thing I'd like to point out is kidney loop filtration uh, is very effective in helping to eliminate the microbial growth. We find that uh, diesel fuel that just sits and is stagnant, mm -hmm. that has some uh, amount of free water in it, will uh, on occasion start to have bacterial growth. And by moving the, the fluid it eliminates that possibility, so we're addressing the dirt, obviously, for the injectors, but we're also addressing the free water, and then we're continuously moving the the fuel around so it eliminates that that bacteria buildup. And we have options as far as like coalesce. Coalesce if there's a lot of water uh, in the supply of the tank or if they have an open tank that does gain water over time, then we have the ability to coalesce and separate the water, the free water, from the diesel fuel uh, while it's in the tank. Do you have any other thoughts as far as what you hear that you would like to talk about as far as bulk tank uh, filtration and some of the questions that you may hear as far as uh, sizing or uh, the contaminants uh, that we need to address? Well, yeah, so another thing that people uh, often miss on their bulk tanks is adding proper breathers. Uh, you know, we have, we have, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a site and they just have a J, they have a little pipe sticking out and a little J, uh, and which, you know, every time they're pulling fuel out of that tank, they're drawing air in, which is going to have a lot of dust in it. Uh, so having a, a breather on that tank uh, to keep that dust out and also uh, some of our technologies within, um, within our breathers actually they work to, depending on the, humi on the humidity in the area at that particular time, they work to keep that moisture either, um, they're working to keep the moisture out from getting into the tank, or quite frankly, um, it's, it, it, it's not allowing, well, it's, it's always not allowing more moisture in. And uh, uh, that is something that, that customers should try to get themselves familiarized with is how to keep that moisture down to a minimum. And, and proper breathers are a huge factor in that. We have one product that we call a trap breather. Uh, that seems to be one product that does a very good job that's uh, as far as keeping the water out and then it also is uh, regenerative. Yes, it's, uh, that, and that's kind of the cool uh, technology of the trap is that uh, it's, uh, it, will, it will dry itself out um, it traps the moisture, and then as the as the day goes on, or as the humidity levels change, it'll dry itself out, regenerate. Um, we've seen over the years that these uh, that the trap breather will last at least as long as the as any uh, of the of the standard desiccant breathers that are out there, um, and it it is just a much better technology uh, for for protecting uh, for protecting the fuel. 
Well, Jim, I really appreciate the information and your knowledge. This is very helpful. It seems like we are in a, uh, an era right now where the, the fuel is very expensive, but also with the supply chain issues as far as getting replacement components for engines uh, can be a delay. So it seems like this is very timely uh, for people to address contamination control with fuel. Absolutely. And again, it's, you know, sort of the mantra I've always had is, uh, you know, the, if you take your filter right down to its most basic level, it is insurance. It's very cheap insurance and will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in sometimes very short time. Okay, Jim, thank you very much for your knowledge and your expertise on fuel uh, contamination control. It's very timely uh, and it's good to review the the three areas that we like to address uh, contamination control. One is the bulk tank carrier to the bulk tank uh, in line uh, at that aspect. And if there's going to be diesel fuel on site for a period of time, uh, kidney loop filtration uh, options for the bulk tank, both fixed and portable. And then also at the nozzle, as we spoke about in a previous podcast. Thank you for uh, listening in on this latest edition of the High Pro Factory Side podcast. Please visit us on the social media sites on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you.